Hello, my name is Angela Miyamoto and I'm a planner with Aging and Disability Services, a division of the Seattle Human Services Department, and I'm also the Funding Process Coordinator. This is the 2023 Congregate Meals for Older Adults Request for Qualification Information Session. This presentation will cover contents in the Request for Qualification, or RFQ, guidelines and application, as well as tips to consider when developing your application. Here's the timeline. The funding announcement was made March 1st, and there will be two information sessions, one virtual and one in person. The last day to submit questions is April 3rd at 4 o'clock, and the application deadline is April 12th at 12 p.m. noon. We plan to notify applicants at, at the end of June with a contract start date of January 1st, 2024. The Congregate Meals for Older Adults RFQ invests in agencies that offer a place where older adults receive culturally relevant, nutritionally balanced meals and have the opportunity to socialize with their peers at meal sites throughout King County. Approximately $3 million is available through this request for qualification from federal and local funds. We intend to fund a maximum of 15 proposals with initial awards January 1st, 2024 through December 31st, 2024. We intend to renew agreements through the 2027 program year contingent on performance and funding availability. Who can apply? Applicants must meet licensing requirements, so Washington State Business License and Seattle Business License as applicable, have a federal tax ID or employer identification number, be a private nonprofit with 501c3 tax exempt status in good standing, or a Washington State recognized tribe, or a public corporation or other legal entity in good standing. HSD will contract with a minimum of two sites or a combination of sites that offer meals Monday through Friday in each major region of King County. So North, Seattle, East, and South. For an example, sites A through D operate in the same region of King County. Site A operates Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Site B operates Tuesday and Thursday. Site C operates Monday through Thursday and Site D operates Friday only. Combine these four sites meet HSD's expectation of having at least two sites that particip participants can choose from to receive meals through Monday through Friday. Sites should be located in places that are convenient for people to access. They attend by driving themselves, sharing a ride with family, friends, or unpaid caregivers, or use public transportation, neighborhood shuttles, or site-provided transportation. We also support transportation for select meal sites. See attachment 10 for more information. If you would like to be considered for transportation for your participants, please complete the attachment. This is not a required form. You must provide a minimum of 25% of total program costs as match. Match could be from in-kind, volunteer support, or support from other federal, non-federal fund, fund sources. The model is outlined in the Guidelines app application and includes the following categories. Meal preparation. Meals must be prepared on-site in an approved kitchen. Food may be prepared in an off-site kitchen by the applicant or partner agency serving the meal. Meals should not be prepared by a restaurant, caterer, or food service vendor. You must have access to a certified food protection manager to ensure persons in charge are properly trained, procedures are developed, and food safety requirements are understood and followed. Food handler permits are up to date. High quality nutritious meals. Meals must meet one third of the dietary reference intake. Must be culturally relevant and honors food preference and choice. And use high quality ingredients including fresh produce from regional farms and producers to the maximum extent possible. Setting. Meal sites should be welcoming and provide a culturally inclusive social environment. 
offer activities such as transportation, exercise, health promotion activities, social engagement activities, and educational opportunities. Offer flexible scheduling to meet the needs of participants and must offer nutrition education activities at least twice a year. Should refer participants to Community Living Connections for resource information and coordinate with other agencies as needed. Facilities. Facilities must meet public health guidelines for a permanent food permit or donated food distributing organization also known as DFDO or DIFDO. Enrollment and donations. Sites must collect basic enrollment information for participants and update the information regularly. And also must provide an opportunity for participants to make voluntary and confidential donations towards the meal costs. Donation requests should be culturally considerate and not deter participation. Participant eligibility. Eligible participants are King County residents age 60 plus or City of Seattle residents under the age of 60 that is an unpaid caregiver to an eligible participant. Priority, and priority populations for congregate meals are identified through the Older Americans Act. The Older Americans Act requires outreach focused on individuals residing in rural areas with greatest economic need, with greatest social need, with severe disabilities, with limited English proficiency, with Alzheimer's disease and related disorders, and at risk for institutional, institutional placement. Focus populations are identified as specific racial or ethnic groups, groups within the priority population. For this funding opportunity, the focus population are BIPOC older adults such as American Indian, Alaska Native, Asian, Black, African American or African descent, Hispanic, Latinx, Native Hawaiian, Pacific Islander. Performance commitments are defined by quantity, quality, and impact performance measures. For quantity, the impact measures are the number of unduplicated older adults, the number of meals, quality, older adults receive nutritious meals, and older adults receive meals that are culturally relevant, and the percent of older adults who engage in activities with, with provided with meals. Impact performance measures is the percent of older adults with increased food security as a result of the Congregate Meals Program. Staff requirements. You must have adequate staff to deliver the service, have a registered dietitian, nutritionist, or RDN, or individual of comparable expertise to ensure that meals meet nutrition guidelines, and have access to a certified food have access to a certified food protection manager. We also contract with registered dietitian nutritionist services and it may be available to meal sites through our multicultural registered dietitian nutritionist services. We have a separate RFP process that will select an agency to provide these services. To be eligible for this, you need to meet one or more of the following criteria. Have a language or cultural barrier to mainstream nutrition services and standards. Your program or site is operated by a volunteer organization or association. The site does not have direct ownership or oversight of the facility. And your site is located and serves a rural community. You can indicate your request for consideration on your application. Other requir requirements for this program include basic enrollment information must be collected for all participants. All data must be entered into GetCare, a state data system used by all area agencies on aging for tracking and reporting purposes. Applicants must be able to collect and, re and report participant level data as required by our federal funding. And a nutrition risk screening must be offered to all participants as nutrition risk screening is a required data element. Each section of the narrative is worth various points. Proposal description is worth 55 points. Capacity, experience, and commitment to community is 
worth 20 points. Collaborations and subcontracting is worth 15 points. Budget and leveraging is worth 10 points for a total of 100 points. Answer the questions and use the rating criteria as a guide as this is how raters will score your application. Budget sheets are all, should also be included. There is proposal budget, personnel detail budget, and meal cost worksheet. Please submit all of these budget forms in Excel. To complete the meal cost worksheet, complete the meal cost worksheet for each site on the separate tabs. Site tabs will automatically feed into the total meal cost worksheet, and the proposal budget will, will auto-populate. Add other funding that will support the meal program, and itemize expenses in categories listed below the main budget sheet as needed. Then you will manually enter the proposal budget, pr proposal personnel detail. Each meal cost worksheet should be completed for each meal site. It includes the base costs, which are ongoing costs. The worksheet will automatically calculate your monthly base costs based on the information you input into these categories. The unit costs is our, our expenses associated with producing the meal, such as food, supply, and other costs. So input information into the meal, meal cost worksheet and it'll automatically calculate your total unit cost based on the number of meals that you also input. The next section is match. First, you enter the monetary value of volunteer hours that will, that will work on this program. In the second match row, you enter other in-kind contributions such as the monetary value of rent, space, and other staff that will work on this program but not paid for by our funding and other non-federal funding that supports the meal program. The last section is a text box, which will asks you to describe your capacity to leverage other resources. Please be as complete as possible, as raters will use this information when making their allocation recommendation. Now let's, through the, now let's, through, now let's walk through the Excel sheet so that you can see how this works. This is the Congregate Meals for Older Adults website, and here you can download the Excel form. You open up the form, and you'll see the form has many different tabs. The first tab is the directions. The second tab is your proposal personnel, your proposal budget. The third tab is the personnel detail budget. Then it's the total meal cost worksheet, followed by a bunch of different site tabs. If you only are doing one meal site, you'll still start with the first meal site tab. But then if you have other meal sites that you would like to propose, you will then complete the different site tabs. So let's put information into the first tab. Let's call this ADS Congregate Meal Site. And then let's put information. So your labor costs, office supplies, rent, contractual employment, transportation, insurance, utilities, other miscellaneous expenses, and then your indirect costs. You'll see the spreadsheet will automatically calculate your base costs and then your monthly base rate. The next section is your unit costs. So this is the cost that, in, that go into producing your meal, so your food and supply costs, and then your total number of meals proposed and then you'll get your unit rate. It will also calculate the total cost of, of your whole total program budget and then your total cost per meal. The next section is match. The first category is your volunteer hours, so the monetary value of volunteers that support your program. And then other 
match contribution. So this is your other in-kind contributions and other non-federal funds that, that contribute to the MEALS program. Okay. So this is your first site tab with information populated. Maybe you have another meal site. So let's go to the second meal site tab and include information on this site tab. So let's call this meal site ADS Congregate Meal Site 2 and have labor costs, office supplies, rent, contractual employment. Let me scroll up a little there. Transportation costs, insurance, utilities, other miscellaneous expenses and indirect costs. And then your food and supplies costs. So this is all the costs that are associated with going into making the meal. And then total number of meals. So you get your rate and then your total cost per meal. You then enter your volunteer match and other match. Okay. So now that you've completed your second tab, you'll then go to your total meal cost worksheet and information that was inputted from your meal, your site tabs should automatically populate your total meal cost worksheet. So this is the total that you've already inputted into the different site tabs. Your total meal total match contribution should be at least 25% of your total costs. This total meal cost worksheet information will then auto populate information into your proposal budget sheet. So the first category is the HSD funding. This, so this is the funding that you're requesting through this proposal. But then you also add information from your other sources of funding to support the meal program. And you do this using the other columns. And please specify the fund source. So this information you'll have to manually enter onto this worksheet. You also have to manually enter information into this proposal personnel detail. So please enter all the staff that support your meal sites onto this detail budget sheet for personnel details. And then each site, you'll also include information for your site's ability to, to leverage other resources. So in the text box below here, this is where you input that information so that you can describe your site's ability to, to leverage other resources. So other funds, volunteers, monetary donations, food and supply donations that support the meal site. You'll do this for every meal site. Fill out that little text box. Another attachment that you'll need to submit is a summary of proposal deliverables. Please complete a separate row for each meal site. Describe your priority and focus population, such as rural, low income, socially isolated, speaks another language, and specify language, and also include ethnicity or, or countries of origin. Enter one region per meal site. Where is the meal site located? Lastly, Enter the unit rate and monthly base, which should match the meal cost worksheet for that site. This is the summary of proposal deliverable sheet, which you can find in attachment six of the application. Please complete each role for every meal site that you are proposing in this in your application. Include your site name, address, days of the week and hours, your average daily attendance, number of yield meals per year, number of older adults per year, so this is your unduplicated count of people that you propose to serve, 
your priority and focus populations and any defining attributes for those populations. Please be specific. Enter one region of King County. So this is the region in which your meal site is located. And then your unit rate and monthly base, which should align with your meal cost worksheet. An example is included in this form. Applications meeting a minimum of 75 points are considered qualified to provide congregate meals for older adults. But being qualified does not guarantee that you will receive funding. Funding recommendation will be based on the following elements. Participant population, so focus population and spec spec specify your BIPOC communities. OAA priority population, the intersection of attributes defined in the focus and priority population, for an example. A Black African American or African descent population may intersect with income and language. So Black African American or African descent population may also be low income and may also communicate into Grenia. Geographic region will also be considered. So we will contract with providers to ensure congregate meals for older adults are located throughout King County and there are at least two meal sites that operate Monday through Friday in each major region of King County, North, Seattle, East and South. We'll also consider the capacity to leverage other resources. So look at the five volunteers, monetary donations, food donations, in-kind support and other support for each meal site. Applications should include the following, a signed application cover sheet, a narrative response, your budget worksheets in Excel, menus for 10 consecutive meals, and your summary of proposal deliverables. The following are optional documents. Please provide a startup timeline if congregate meals is a new service, a memorandum of agreement if you are subcontracting with another agency, Letter of collaboration if you are proposing of substantial partnership with another agency or individual. Letter of agreement if you have a fiscal sponsor. And nutrition transportation, attachment 10, if you would like to be considered for nutrition transportation services. Applications can be submitted via online portal or email. Please either one, please do either one and not both. No faxed, mailed, or in-person submissions will be accepted. Applications must be complete and on time, and they are due April 12 by 12 p.m. noon. So to submit your application via online, here is the website, the web link. This is an online application. You cannot save your work. This is not an online application, so you cannot save your work. There's a 100 meg megabyte maximum. The system only accepts the stated file types and you will receive an email confirmation after you submit your application. Please email if you have any issues with uploading your application. When you click on this link here, it will take you to our online application submission page and clicking on this link will take you to where you can submit your application. You may also submit your application via email. Attachments are limited to 30 megabytes. Title your subject heading 2023 Congregate Meals for Older Adults RFQ, and you'll receive an email acknowledging receipt of your application. After you submit your application, it's sent to the rating committee. The rating committee reviews your, the written applications and makes a funding recommendation. Recommendations go to the HSD director, then you are notified. If you would like to appeal the decision, you may appeal based on the two criteria. Violation of policy outlined in the funding process manual, or violation of policy or failure to adhere to guidelines or published criteria and or procedures in the funding opportunity. Appeals must be received within four business days from your award or denial notification, and a written decision will be made within four business days upon appeal receipt. If you're awarded funding, please be prepared to provide the following documents to move forward with the contracting process. 
tips. Be specific and answer all parts of the question. Look at the rating criteria as this is how raters will score your application. Double check your numbers and please use the Excel template and submit your budget forms in Excel. Have someone else review your application. Start early and allow a lot of time for submission as there might be issues with connectivity. Submit all required attachments and please do not submit any materials that's not requested with your application. Check the website regularly as updates and changes could be made. Send all questions to me at my email address, angela.miyamoto at seattle.gov. All questions and answers will be posted on the Funding Opportunity webpage within five business days, and only written answers are official responses. The deadline to receive questions is April 3rd by 4 o'clock. Again, here's the website that holds the RFQ information. Thank you for watching this presentation and have a great day.